So we need your okay, opinion. Really? What do you think about the next five to ten years on AI? Please give us a view. Artificial insemination? Artificial intelligence. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but try, try audience, I must say. Um, so, um, yes, artificial intelligence um, is, um, <laughs> is, is certainly going to profoundly change the world. I mean, one of the most significant ways is self-driving. Um, so we've been putting a lot of effort into self-driving uh, technology for cars. Um, you, you don't see it quite as much in Europe um, because we, we first have to make it work in the U.S. Uh, before we uh, increase the complexity of trying to make it elsewhere in the world. Um, but I think we're quite close to having the car be fully autonomous. So, for example, like right now, I could I'm in Austin. And if I wanted to drive, say, to the airport, the car could take me to the airport with no interventions. Uh, using And all it's using are digital neural nets, in other words, artificial intelligence, and cameras. So there's no LiDAR, radar, nothing. Uh, and in fact, if you think about how um, humans drive cars, humans are biological neural nets, and we use eyes. So it's the eyes and... But biological neural nets, the analog is, or digital, <laughs> the analog for digital, uh, is cameras and uh, digital neural nets. Uh, this is working remarkably well. The, it has been quite difficult to do this because it turns out that in, in, order to use the, in order for this to work, the car has to really be quite fully intelligent. Really, as, as a subset, for example, it has to learn how to read everything. And, and, and how to assess intention among drivers and, and pedestrians. Uh, so it's, it's, it's you're, you're end up creating sort of a baby artificial general intelligence to solve this. Elon Musk just made a groundbreaking announcement, and it's safe to say investors are blown away. Tesla's next-gen Roadster is going to become a reality. And not just that, the groundbreaking Tesla innovation could be closer than you think. Today, we'll take a deep dive into this uncommon innovation from Tesla, and we'll also explore the many possibilities that lie ahead. So buckle up, because the Tesla Roadster is a story that begs to be told. This is the Tesla Roadster. It was unveiled in 2017, and the company promised it would be the fastest car ever made, but it never made it to production until now, it seems. After six years, CEO Elon Musk saying the long-delayed electric sports car will begin shipments next year. Praz Sumeranian has the details. I can't, Praz. Help, I can't help laugh my way through that intro. It's coming now. It's coming now, Praz. Really? Is it really coming? <laughs> I, I mean, like, so that's a little credulous. He I says don't know. it is, but and just to rewind a little bit, 2017, right? This is, f what, five years ago, we heard, we saw this thing roll out at, a, at, a, at an event, um, and then haven't heard much since until 2022, when Musk said at the Giga Rodeo, when they opened up the Austin factory, that it's coming, uh, it's going to come in 2023, right? And they reopened reservations, the whole, and we'll talk about that. But basically now we see Musk tweeting late last night, it is coming. They've, 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 they basically, production design is complete. Uh, they're going to unveil the car later this year, like you said, Josh, and then mm -hmm. planning for sales next year. Now, says again, a zero to 60 time, less than a second, kind of insane stuff here. But again, we heard this last year, we heard this two years ago, we heard it five years ago. Is it actually going to come out? Um, deposit holders, some have put down $50,000 yeah. um, with no interest, right? That's refundable. I'm sorry, $5,000 refundable. Other people have put down $250,000 for the foundation series mm -hmm. uh, to get that car, so. Well, I hope um, they get it eventually, right? I mean, this reminds me of the Cybertruck a little bit as well, which as which did, uh, well, it sort of come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And that, that, I mean, eventually, right, right. Yeah. Um, it's interesting timing because, of course, BYD came out mm -hmm. with its own supercar um, earlier this week. Is that a coincidence that we're now getting an update on the Roadster? Uh, that was, I wrote a piece on it's going to come out just just in the next few moments. But basically, yes, I kind of allude to the fact that it's interesting that these tweets came out late last night. Only we talked about BYD's mm -hmm. U9 uh, supercar, right? It's going to cost two hundred thirty thousand dollars, on the same price as potentially the Tesla Roadster. Uh, scissor doors, four motors, all this, all these, all these pretty cool stats. But only a couple months ago, Neo also said that their EP9 hypercar. It's going to cost $3 million US. 
uh, 1,000 horsepower, interchangeable batteries, all this sort of stuff. These, the Chinese supercar makers are, are sort of coming on strong here, and it seems like maybe Musk kind of had to cough up more details because he mm. felt the need mm. to, because these, these, these cars are going to come on the road uh, later this year, the Chinese cars, so, uh, in China, but not necessarily uh, in the U.S., but still, competition on the list. Right, if you're a Chinese yeah. buyer, are you going to wait for the Tesla Roadster, yeah. or are you going to buy one of these other ones? I want to quickly cool. just say something real quick. Um, yes, it is a $5,000 deposit, not a $50,000 deposit for... Oh, that's uh, a lot yeah. lower. Yeah. yeah. But still... Just wanted to correct it's not that. nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting probably because, listen, I, I think that's a beautiful car. The lines on that car are, are beautiful to me. But I, I would say, like, 200000 when you find yourself competing with, like, a Lamborghini or Ferrari, that's a small market. I mean, ultimately, that doesn't move the needle for Tesla or the EV market, right? I mean, what have we talked about so much on the show? What's one way to reignite growth here? It's not the 200000 car. And again, it's gorgeous car. But ultimately, you need lower-priced EVs, right? Yeah, I think this, these are just halo cars that bring people in. Like, you know, they have, they have the Optimus robot in some, some stores to kind of bring people in. Same with the Cybertruck, it's in a lot of the marquee Tesla stores to bring people in. So that's like yeah. sort of the thing that kind of draws you, but you're going to buy the, right. the Model Y or the Model 3, maybe the X or, or the S as your actual car. Yeah. Uh, quickly, I want to re again clarify that it's a $5,000 deposit. But then within 10 days, you got a Kaufman or, Kaufman or 45000 for ah. a full, for a 50000 So it is effectively deposit. a $50,000 yeah. deposit for a car. that people have put down. Yeah. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has recently disclosed that the Roadster is going to enter production next year. That's just a few months from now. This announcement came just six years after the car was first revealed. And it appears that this time, Tesla actually means business. Musk has also said that the company's upcoming roadster can make 0 to 60 in just one second, thanks to tech from his other venture, SpaceX. The billionaire disclosed these interesting updates in a series of tweets on X, noting that the car has been redesigned and will soon head into production. However, as expected, the announcement came with several claims of criticism, with some others claiming that Musk made the announcement simply in response to what BYD just said about their sports car and low-cost EV. About this Roadster claim, zero to 60 in a second. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't even know that was possible if you're not like a Formula One racer. Is that even street legal? Can you make a car like that and hand it to Average Joe? It's funny you brought that up. Actually, what will happen is the car would lift off the ground and, and get airborne from the, the air. So that's actually not a realistic number. You know, where we're at now at two seconds on the plaid almost makes me dizzy. So like when you go that fast, it's really hard for your body to keep up with the speed. You know, like the, the plaid is faster than what your body can take, you know? And so the idea that you would be even twice as fast, you'd get it down to a second. I don't think the human body can take that. And then secondly, I think it'd be very easy for the car to get airborne. And that's why Formula One has all those, you know, things they use to keep the car, you know, pushing down onto the ground. So I think that's a nice idea. I think Elon has a little ego thing going on because the Yang Wang came out from BYD. And this is a supercar made by the Chinese. And he wants to show that he can make a better supercar. Okay. Uh, there was a big article uh, yesterday about how uh, we all might be driving BYDs soon. Uh, what do you what do you think about that? I think there's a low likelihood of that, but I think that they can do pretty well in the U.S. market if they do what Hyundai did, which is change their name, make it American, and make the brand its own, so it's not identified to a nationality. And I think that that's what Genesis has done so well. I think. We've seen this with the, the Korean brands very successfully. So I think BYD could do that, but they need to come up with a brand that really appeals to Americans. Musk has previously said that the Roadster introduced in 2017 may finally enter production in 2024. Back in 2017, Musk unveiled a next-gen Tesla Roadster during an event announcement when he announced the Semi the company's Class 8 electric truck. However, the story has changed a bit, as Musk recently announced that the Roadster, which was originally slated for production and delivery back in 2020, may go into production in 2025. Tesla entered the market with the speedy, sporty Roadster. But when it introduced its Model S sedan in June 2012, it stopped producing it. As time went on, the automaker began to redesign its first SUV, the Model X, in September 2015. And the first Model 3 deliveries kicked off in July 2017 as Tesla entered into the category of affordable cars. Unlike the release of these models though, the Roadster made a lot of buzz in the auto market, and now more than ever, investors are wondering whether Tesla or not is truly fully aware of the complexity of this announcement and innovation which it hopes to bring to life.
Hey guys, welcome back to Tesla Tomorrow. You know how some things are so outlandish, so perfectly made, that they end up being brilliant? Well, that's what the Tesla Roadster is. Way back in 2018, SpaceX launched its Falcon Heavy rocket and showcased its power when they put a cherry red Tesla Roadster on the top of it, complete with a spacesuit wearing mannequin named Starman. It was a ultimate piece of space age marketing. Fast forward to today and Musk has made some pretty new forecasts about the Roadster's journey. Turns out that little red car is going further than we thought. Instead of hanging out in an orbit around Mars, it looks like it might be on a wild cosmic road trip for millions, maybe even billions of years. And now you may be thinking, okay, cool story, but what's the point? Well, here's the thing. The Roadster, as silly as it may seem, is a symbol of Tesla's whole vibe, and here's why. But before we get on with that though, if you're liking this type of content, hit that like button, subscribe and turn on the post notifications to keep up to date on everything going on with Tesla. First, it's a sign that Tesla may be thinking outside the box. Tesla isn't just about making the same old boring cars, rather about pushing boundaries, taking risks and doing things that nobody else would ever even dream of. Think of launching a car into space? Well, that's pure Tesla audacity. Also, Elon Musk understands the value of a good show and getting people's attention. It's not just a car company, Tesla is thinking big, and the Roadster is a tangible reminder of that long-term vision. Even though some analysts still consider it as one of Elon Musk's outrageous tweets. Last year, the CEO, Elon Musk, began promoting or amplifying anti-Semitic posts that are on X, the platform he owns, formerly known as Twitter. Since then, the stock has dropped about 13%. And a lot of people say, you know, what he is speaks so loudly that they can't hear what he is saying. Well, what he's saying also speaks very loudly. What are you hearing from your clients who have accounts with Gerber Kawasaki and also the clients who own Teslas? Right. And, and I do have to stress, we have thousands of clients at Gerber Kawasaki on top of our fund, GK, and which also has many clients. And so, you know, most of our clients have Tesla. So it affects a lot of people. But when you put up that chart about Tesla's performance, what you didn't show is that the market has actually taken off since that date. So relative to other tech stocks, Tesla's vastly underperformed since Elon has taken such outspoken and, and in my mind, you know, controversial and negative views. And by doing that, many of my clients, and I tweeted this several months ago, you know, were furious and sold their stock. And now it turns out that that was probably a good move mm. because the stock is much lower from then. And as a firm, we've been forced to lower our allocation to Tesla because as we've really? seen the problems mount and the solutions that we see not being implemented, we've had to be prudent investors for our clients and understand that the story has changed. Changed. The Tesla story is not the same. What do you make of his play for more control? He wants 25% control of the company. Right now, he has about 12%. He used to have much more, but he sold a lot of his shares in order to pay for what was a very expensive price tag for Twitter. Uh, the board, we haven't heard from them. We're waiting to hear a lot of people on this board, but it's rare that they've ever if ever swatted down Elon Musk. Charlie Gasparino makes this point all the time. The Tesla board does not rein him in. Granted, over the past several years, why should they? The stock has done incredibly well, but right now the question is, should he be given such a huge chunk of power? And he says, if you don't give it to me, then I will develop my, my AI ideas somewhere else other than Tesla. Yeah, so the board is his friends and family. So, you know, I've never seen a board more conflicted than Tesla, and they just settled a lawsuit where they were so overcompensated, they're having to give back $750 million of overcompensation that they settled in this lawsuit. And Elon's pay package himself is worth $50 billion today, which you would think would incentivize any human on earth, right? So when you look at his pay package plus his stake, it's closer to 20% of the stock, and he fully controls the board. And what he's basically saying is, I want you to give me like 30 to 50 billion of compensation more for me to do my fiduciary responsibility <laughs> to the company. So there's never I'll been a more delusional CEO that I've ever invested with. Remember the feelings he had as a kid, that feeling of wonder looking up at the stars? 
Well, buckle up because the Roadster is here to turn that childhood fantasy into reality. However, while it is easy to get all excited about it, it's important to consider how the market will react to that kind of shift. Let's strap in and take a closer look. First up, the big elephant in the room, and that's the price tag. The Roadster is expected to be expensive, so it's not exactly for everyone's grocery run. However, for those who do have the means to afford it, well, the Roadster's got some serious selling points that you should know about. One thing is its performance, 0-60 in a mere 1.9 seconds, faster than most fighter jets. Also, owning a Roadster isn't just about driving, but making a statement, and the car screams cutting-edge technology. Remember the first iPhone or the PlayStation? They were unique innovations, and we think the Roadster has got the potential to be a similar cultural milestone, a piece of automotive history with serious bragging rights. And now the market will likely be a mixed bag. Some are going to scoff at the price tag, questioning the practicality of the car, while others are going to be memorized by the technology and audacity of the whole idea. Here's the thing. Tesla isn't necessarily aiming for mass market appeal with this car. In fact, the automaker is playing a different game. Tesla is building a halo car, a technological marvel pushing the boundaries to keep it at the forefront of innovation. And while this technology may seem a bit outrageous, and not for everyone, it does capture the imagination. So will the Roadster become a commercial success in the traditional sense? Well, maybe not. But it will undoubtedly create buzz, attract high-profile buyers, and solidify Tesla's image as a company that constantly pushes the envelope. And who knows, maybe one day, owning a piece of the future won't cost quite as much as a small spaceship. Said it, you know, we're really focused on the long term here at ARK Invest, which really you should be for a disruptive name like Tesla. So, you know, they, they did mention, yes, production um, growth for this coming year will be slower. Uh, you know, they, they are focused on this next generation vehicle platform and they're they're attributing you know the the part of the uh, cautiousness on production to that and overall that's a great thing right um you know as well as anyone that i'm excited about the robo taxi opportunity so the fact that they're building a custom uh robo taxi vehicle is really exciting and shows their confidence and their autonomous capability um you, you know we have uh, fsd12 their you know latest version of the autonomous technology software in the car rolling out to customers like that, that again shows confidence in their capability. We also heard that um, Optimus might begin shipping next year. So I think, you know, Tesla is this behemoth in the AI space. It's going to be one of the greatest AI opportunities of our time. And I, I think to ignore that is, is frankly wrong when thinking about the stock. So I'm excited about it. Well, the next gen vehicle platform joins the, the traditional car making side of the story with the AI story, right? What did we learn? Musk said it will be low cost, that they're making progress on start of production, which will start in Texas in the first instance. But he said, take 2025 with a grain of salt. Did you learn enough during the call about the next gen platform to fully understand where we go from here on this future robo taxi concept? Yes, well, I'd say, you know, overall, I, I think Elon is a lot more cautious than he has been in the past with his forecasts. I mean, he said it on the call that he has been really optimistic with timelines. Um, and honestly, who can blame him? Because I think humans in general are pretty bad at predicting AI progress. Um, but yes, we heard that they can start production next year on the next generation vehicle platform. You know, I think there's a lot of cause for optimism in what they said around margins. So we saw automotive gross margins, X credits tick up in the quarter. Um, you know, we did hear that, one, they're, they're cutting costs on a per car basis um, in, in a way that's really unprecedented in the auto industry. Um, and they also said that even though, you know, on their current vehicle platform, they're sort of reaching the limits of that cost reduction, that doesn't mean that they're done, right? Um, so we heard on the design side, um, you know, it's commodity prices that flows through to the underlying cost of the vehicle that takes some time. Uh, so there's still optimism there. And I think that's amazing. Um, I mean, when you look at EVs as a whole, traditional automakers are cutting back on their electric mm. vehicle platforms. I mean, that's a bad idea because EVs are already cost competitive with gas powered cars. And guess what? It's only going to get cheaper. So this is the future. And, and Tesla is the leader there. In 2021, sales of EVs doubled to 6.78 million. And weekly EV sales this year were much higher than sales as a whole in 2012. Also, in 2022, the market grew tremendously. More than 3.2 million plug-in cars were registered worldwide in the first five months of this year. 
and this growth has been somewhat facilitated by leading nations making moves to reduce carbon emissions in the future. The thing is, EVs are believed to be able to play a crucial role in zero emissions targets by 2050, and the industry is living up to this expectation. Global EV sales have been up this year and are likely to go higher in the coming years, as more people become more interested in the tech. So it's now easier to own an EV than it was 10 years ago, and the market's expected to experience exponential growth for years, and Tesla will be a big beneficiary of this growth. A critical part of EVs that people often ignore is climate change. In Tesla's previous impact report, it disclosed that the largest source of carbon emissions, accounting for 27% of the total in 2022, is the mining of metals and manufacturing of batteries. The aluminium that Tesla uses accounts for 18% of its emissions, with steel at 8%. Tesla scooped up the remaining 47% of emissions into different categories, which include downstream transportation and distribution, employee commuting, and business travel, as well as the use of its cars. Now, judging by this report, EV supply chains appear to produce more emissions than supply chains of gas-powered vehicles. But it does get interesting in that lifetime when emissions of conventional cars are much higher, as they continue to burn gasoline throughout their average lifespan. EVs, on the other hand, will produce 55 tons less of CO2 emissions in their lifetimes, according to Tesla's calculations. And so, while we do find that there is a large demand for these cars, if we critically analyze the market, we can see exactly why. Starting today, Ford EV owners will be able to access Tesla's supercharger network with the use of an adapter. Yahoo Finance's Praz Sumeranian checked it out firsthand and joins us now for more. Praz. Yeah, so you know, a year ago, shocking news when this was announced, when uh, mm -hmm. Elon Musk went on Twitter Spaces with uh, Jim Farley and they talked about this deal. And now, uh, here we are with, uh, the, today's the first day you can actually use an adapter. So I went to a location in New Jersey here with a, a Tesla supercharged location and they provided a F-150 lighting here for me to test out the process. So the actual adapter itself, and I, I, I have a, uh, some video of that, it's actually made and is engineered, designed, and, and made by Tesla to be for use in this in this with this vehicle. And basically, what happens is you plug it into the Tesla charger, and now you have the ability to plug the, that plug into the the F-150 or the Ford uh, EV, and it immediately starts charging. There's no app. There's no. I got to set up my thing. I got to type this in. I got to find the charger. No, like just like for Tesla, it works seamlessly for Ford, and that's really a nice thing because once you have your account set up in the Ford Pass, it's all good. Uh, it seemed relatively easy to use. Nice heft there with that adapter. Uh, and look, it's going to make, it's, a, it's, a, it's an advantage for, for Ford being the first automaker to use this to be able to access this network. Uh, I think it's a competitive advantage that a lot of people are going to want to actually consider when they don't want to buy a Tesla, but they want to use that, that charging network. When Tesla began production of the Roadster back in 08, the vehicle instantly became a hit and made good sales that year. Despite selling at a price that eluded many, it was an EV with realistic features and extraordinary battery tech. The Roadster's journey is a metaphor for Tesla itself, and it makes Tesla a company built on bold ideas, technological leaps, and a healthy dose of showmanship. And while we don't know where this latest Roadster is going to go, we do know that it does bring us an out-of-this-world chapter in the Tesla story. But what do you think? Let us know down below. And if you want to know more about what Tesla's been up to over the last few days, go ahead and click on this next video on your screen. See you there.